Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we're gonna start with Chris Bumstead physique update. And this right here is Chris Bumstead in his off season. I mean it's been quite a while since the Mr. Olympia and he stayed in a really good shape. I would even say pretty good shape, this is a really good shape. I don't know if you guys are subscribers of Chris's channel on YouTube, but if you followed it, you saw that maybe like a week after the Mr. Olympia, he made a cheat day video. And he says that was basically the first cheat day that he had since the Mr. Olympia. So it took him about a week to actually start, you know, I wouldn't even say binging, I mean that wasn't really much of a cheat day. It wasn't, you know, really a hardcore cheat day. I know what bodybuilders like to do after the shows. They eat, I mean, I mean myself included, we eat like for a couple of hours straight, just stuffing our face for at least like a few days after the show. And when your body is so depleted, so tired, when it is so exhausted and so hungry, it burns everything like furnace. It's like putting paper in the furnace. So I know Chris is well aware that even if he ate a whole bunch of junk food after the Mr. Olympia, he probably wouldn't have gained any fat. Maybe he would gain some water if he, if he ate a lot of salt. And I think that's the main issue. I think that's what he is concerned the most with because he doesn't want to eat you know crazy junk food because it has a lot of salt, a lot of sodium. And you know his body with kidneys and everything, it's not really clearing itself properly. So he can't really push the, the, the electrolytes that hard. And I think that's why he's, he's trying to, to stay healthy, not really lean. But healthy, he doesn't want to risk his health, he doesn't want to risk another flare-up, and I think that's why he stayed this lean. Is he attending, is he planning on staying this lean throughout his entire off-season? I don't know, I think his body, his body just, everybody's body wants to, you know, get to a certain level of body fat where it feels comfortable, and I don't think this is very comfortable for him, so I think over time he will gain more fat, his body is going to ask for more food and he will give it, he probably just won't eat a lot of junk, maybe he's doing a lot of cardio still and that's why he's maintaining this conditioning, I don't know, I don't know what his plans are, I don't think he's gonna be competing before the Mr. Olympia, especially with his, uh, not only his condition, but also the fact that he has really nothing to prove, like why is he even doing the Mr. Olympia anymore, I mean he's like, uh, he's, he's leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else, if there wasn't for Chris Bumstead, what would Classic Physique look like, he's a different class, of a bodybuilder in that in, in those lineups nobody nobody gets close to him these days and he accomplished so much at such a such a young age he's like 26 right now i believe and uh, you know he he's uh, a part owner of a huge supplement company he has so many sponsorships he's making a lot of money he has it all figured out basically so i don't know where he even finds the motivation to keep competing and with that kidney disease and everything, like, I don't see him doing more than one show a year, that being Mr. Olympia, and that's plenty. Maybe he decides soon to stop doing even that. It would be a sad day for bodybuilding, especially for classic physique. It would kind of destroy classic physique, it would put it down way, way, way lower, you know. Without him, it would be just, like, 50% of what it is, honestly, that's my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, I mean, he's staying lean, so he's probably just... Yeah, it just happened, I don't think he has any plans of competing soon, again, so I think the next time you're gonna see him is next year, Mr. Olympia, if, if, if that, I don't know what his plans are, but, like, that's, that's maximum we're gonna see, and, I don't know, if I was him, I wouldn't be super motivated to, to, to keep competing, because he has really nothing to prove, what do you guys think? Alright, next topic is Phil Heath, and the question, is he retired? Is he retired or not? Does anybody even know that? I don't think he ever made like an official statement, and this was his most recent, uh, it's not a physique update, it's a bicep check, but you can kind of get the idea of where his size and conditioning is, and you can see that he is, you know, decently lean, he did not let go of himself, he's still in a good shape, he, he still has a decent amount of mass, and it's interesting, the, the, the most interesting part here, not it's not his bicep, I mean his bicep is just his bicep, you already know what it looks like, it's not looking worse, like the, the, the muscle belly did not get shorter, it's not injured, it's still full and round and long, and the tricep is hanging there as well, so I think he's just in his usual off-season shape and size and everything, so it's nothing really, it's nothing really revealing in this photo, but the caption is interesting, so he says, Wondering if I should get these to 23 inches shredded or not. 
And that's the question. I mean, 23 inches. Yeah, I don't think his arms were ever 23 inches. Uh, I think like maybe at his best they were like 22 inches, 22 and a half, maybe maybe 23 up to 23, not more than that, not 24, no. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know he has the best arms, one of the best arms in the history of bodybuilding, but I don't think he has that big of a structure to actually have 24 inch arms like Ronnie, for example. So uh, he says, should he get them to 23 inches shredded? And you guys know that that's a lot, 23 inches arms shredded that that's a big bodybuilder that's really really impressive why is he even talking about being shredded again if he has no plans of competing i don't think phil Heath ever made an official statement that he is officially retired if i'm mistaken you tell me down below in the comment section but i'm pretty sure i'm not mistaken so he's not retired i wouldn't say so no maybe he doesn't really have exactly plans for his future competitions maybe he does but he's not retired. I don't know if his plan is Atlético next year. If it happens, finally, they're delaying it for two years now. Uh, I hope it's gonna happen next year. And I'm sure you guys at this point are familiar with the fact that he's collaborating with The Rock and the crew that is creating the Atlético. So I'm pretty sure whenever it happens, they will have Phil Heat over there in, in some extent. I don't know if he's gonna be there as a competitor or as a promoter simply, or just, uh, or something else, I don't know, like a commentator, something like that, an MC, I don't know, I'm pretty sure he'll be good at all those things, he's very well spoken, uh, but yeah, I hope it's gonna be him as a competitor, I don't care which show, Atlantic on Mr. Olympia, Arnold Classic, New York Pro, I don't care, I do want to see him back on stage, because the last time we saw his, his stomach, his midsection, it looked improved, it seemed like he worked on it, to make it better, why would he do that if he doesn't have any plans for competing? Maybe just for himself, to look better when he's on a beach, to just look better when he looks at himself in a mirror. I don't know, maybe it's just a health thing. The fact that he, that he fixed the hernia and his midsection uh, looking better is just a collateral damage, I don't know. But in this most recent photo, he's talking about being shredded and having bigger arms than before. Is he talking about competing again and looking at his best, looking his best ever? I don't know, guys, I'm just wondering. I'm a big fan of Phil Heath, and I would love to see him back on stage. I don't know, man, maybe I'm reaching, maybe this is nothing, but it's a little bit of a hope, you know? Talking about being shredded and having bigger arms, it just feels like he wants to make progress. And for him, for a guy of his stature, I mean, guy who accomplished that much, to make more progress and to get at his best ever, shredded and bigger arms than ever, why would he do that unless he wants to compete again and become the Mr. Olympia once again to tie the record with Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney, maybe even a couple of more and, you know, make make a firm uh, spot for himself at the very top of bodybuilding accomplishments. I don't know, we'll see what's gonna happen, but what do you guys think? Is he retired or not? Do you think we're gonna see him back on stage again, ever, or not? Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section. Hey, maybe it is time for the new crop of bodybuilders. Maybe I'm just being nostalgic. When I started following bodybuilding, Phil Heath was the champ. It was about 2011, so Phil Heath already became the Mr. Olympia. And maybe I am being, being a little bit uh, nostalgic, I want to see him back on the stage and dominating. But again, maybe it's the time for the new crop of competitors. For example, this one right here. This guy took third place at the Romania Pro, uh, right after Samson Dauda and the winner Rafael Brandau. His name is Behruz Tabani. And this guy looked better than the top two in certain poses. He was a little bit shorter, not to say that he's a short guy, but standing next to Samson Dauda and Quinton Area and some other taller guys, he does seem a little bit uh, shorter, though he's not super short. And these guys are taller and that's why it make it look that way. He, he structured his overall size as a man. He doesn't really seem that big, but he is packed, man. The legs could be a little bit... Uh, I would like to see bigger outer head, uh, the sweep should be a little bit fuller. Uh, he, you know, he has crazy adductors, but not really a lot of uh, lateral head of the quadriceps. But upper body, I mean, the thickness through that chest and arms and shoulders, just compare that to Rafael and to Samson and to everybody else really in this lineup. So he has a lot of thickness. He is a big bodybuilder. And this guy might be like the future, you know? He's another Iranian bodybuilder, by the way. Iran. These guys, they all have kind of a similar look, similar, you know, hardness, shape, uh, roundness. 
that you can kind of see if the, if the guy is Iranian or not. Like Haider Japan also has these these traits like this guy. So this guy looks really freaking impressive, and he took third at the Romania Pro. I don't know if he deserves to be better than that. In some poses, he does look the best on that stage, but still third after these two guys who are ha who really have big names, Samson Dauda and Rafael Brandao. That's a huge accomplishment. But I feel like if everything goes well, this guy is going to be one of the dominating bodybuilders in near future. And for the end, I also wanted to show you this guy. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Jordan Peters. I am a huge fan of this bodybuilder right here. I mean, he's much more than a bodybuilder. He has one of the biggest subscription websites about bodybuilding on the internet. And he's one of the strongest bodybuilders uh, today. And uh, also, the, probably the most important thing about him is his mindset. If you listen to his podcasts, uh, the, the podcast that he was a guest on, when, you, when he talks about his mindset, how, how anal, how uh, devoted he is about uh, bodybuilding, about being, you know, 100% focused on progress, it's just ridiculous. And also how he perceives lifting, training, how much he gives in those training sessions that he does, and he's strong, like a maniac. He's one of the, like, one of the strongest powerlifters in the world, probably, even though he doesn't compete in the powerlifting. But he doesn't even compete in bodybuilding anymore, and, uh, you know, he, he has so much muscle. Right here, he's like 270, 280, something like that, and he was even over 300 pounds. He was like 310, and he's 5 foot 6, I believe. So, <laughs> being that short, he should be like a 212 bodybuilder, and he can't get lower than like 250 when he competes and he gets shredded. But he doesn't have the best structure, and also he has a huge gut. So, it just, you know, as a competitive bodybuilder, he maybe somehow he could get a pro card if he really chased it, but to be a good pro, you know, in open bodybuilding, yeah, it wouldn't would happen. I don't think so. It's hard for him to even get a pro card, probably. But in the gym, he's not the biggest, the most craziest, the, the most crazy, the, the, the most impressive, the most freaky bodybuilders of today. And I'm a big fan of his. And this is him right now. He looks absolutely insane, crazy, beastly here. So I don't know if you guys are fans or followers of Jordan Peters, but here is an update. And that is going to do it for this video today, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.